The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, well, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, lovely to have you with us, and thank you for being here today. Uh, and it's uh, good morning to our friends in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, the lands down under, and early good afternoon to our friends in Wellington. Mr. Lancaster's with us today. He's very interested in trading programs. I'm going to talk to you a bit about that. Um, how's the volume, folks? Can you uh, hear me all right? If you just type in the question box, any of you who are on at the moment, great, Scott's got it. Okay, so it's working in New Zealand. Good on you, Scotty. Um, okay, so uh, we've got an uh, interesting program today. Um, thank you, Kevin. Nice to have you with us. Um, and uh, uh, all our old friends, as usual, are here. Nice to see so many of you here. Al, haven't seen you for a while. Uh, Alexander, haven't seen you for a while. Uh, uh, Brian Baird, he's uh, up in the uh, Darling Downs. Good to have you with us, uh, Brian. And Chris, he's doing a tutorial at the moment. Uh, Ewell, good to have you with us, Ewell. We need a uh, couple more sessions with you, so let me know uh, what days you're available. Um, Dean, uh, he's a tutorial guy. He's done two tutorials, actually. He's a bit of a wild man. And <laughs> Uh, it's just this, Dean says the ice just broke off the river this week. Um, uh, he's, uh, he's a gun trader, this fella. He's just done a tutorial. Um, nice. Uh, uh, Mr. Nguyen, nice to have you with us too. Uh, John, you also. Don down at Coffs Harbour. Justin down in the Hunter Valley. Hope you've had some rain down there now, guys. Uh, Mark, Marilyn, uh, up at uh, Cleveland. Marilyn, um, I don't know what we've decided we were doing. You better... Send me an email and remind me if you would. Uh, Michael Pell, our uh, world traveling uh, guy. Nice to have you with us, Michael. Uh, another Mike Murphy, he's a tutorial guy. Milton, uh, nice to have you. And uh, all the other guys as well. Very good to have all of you with us, particularly uh, Sue up in Cairns. Uh, and uh, Tom Tom. Uh, Tom is a wealth manager in Florida. He's a very keen supporter of the Daniel Code. But Sue, I wanted to... Uh, Always like to say a particular uh, hello to the ladies. We don't have many of them, and we should have more. Um, and Sue's just finished a tutorial, and she's going to be a gun trader. She's uh, uh, going well. She's absolutely thrilled with the idea. She writes to me and said she's been trading for a long time, but uh, having done the Daniel Code uh, trading tutorial, it's the first time that she's consistently making money, um, and big money at that. So I hope that's still going just as well for you, Sue. If not, let me know. Any of you people who've uh, ever done a tutorial with me uh, will know that um, uh, the commitment is not just we'll give you X number of lessons. The commitment is uh, I'll be here uh, as long as God allows me to, and I'm happy to help you at any time. And uh, uh, yes, Sue's uh, doing well. Um, uh, and uh, what happens uh, with traders is they get into bad habits. Excuse me for a moment. Yes, sorry, folks, for that interruption. Yes, uh, traders too get into bad habits and uh, uh, need to be uh, have a little refresh um, occasionally, just to put them on the path and bring them up to date on the uh, latest thinking. Um, I've called this um, I've called this uh, webinar today evolution, um, although um, there's some doubt about evolution uh, in my family. Um, my children, of course, or not of course, but you may not know, they went to a Christian school. Uh, so they're very much imbued with the uh, story of creation. Uh, and then when they went to university, uh, they were very much imbued with the theories of evolution. Um, but they seem to have been able to <coughs> hold both those ideas in their mind at the same time, uh, which I would have thought is a fairly basic skill, uh, and something we might try and introduce to uh, the American political class if they could <coughs> start to think of the other person's point of view is not always absolute utter stupidity. Uh, things might get a little friendlier over there. However, I have to say uh, that uh, the machinations of American politics um, are really my uh, uh, daily amusement. It's, uh, it's fascinating stuff. Um, it really is. Uh, great. Okay. 
Let's move on, uh, folks. This is a, a little bit of uh, my story or what I want to tell you about uh, um, how I've evolved in uh, my trading stance and how I hope you will. Um, and to start with, I've left in a few slides from last week, or two weeks ago it was, wasn't it? Uh, I've left those in uh, so that um, uh, those of you who uh, were not with us then can just uh, get a feel of where I'm coming from. And uh, this slide's called The Trading Game. It's uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, the main point here, the second one from the bottom, is that um, all of these listed uh, markets that are in an index, S&P, Russell, Dow, NASDAQ, any of them, uh, they're all subject to set rules. They have to hold, amongst other things, minimum prices uh, for a set period. And if they drop below that, uh, they get caught with what's called rebalancing. Those uh, stocks that are not performing well or the worst performing stocks, uh, they're taken out of the index and they're replaced with uh, the hot new thing. Um, I'm not suggesting that that's the only thing that goes to explain this ever-rising uh, equity line from uh, lower left to upper right, uh, but that, of course, is the prime marketing tool of all stockbrokers. Um, and there's no doubt that the system, through its rebalancing, um, is engineered to always you just get a, uh, a bucket of uh, uh, hot water. Um, and if you can get it to divide into hot and cold and you keep taking out the cold and adding boiling hot, uh, you'll see that it has an amazing uh, effect on the whole business. Um, so um, this is just from uh, the last um, webinar, just read through it. Um, I'm talking about that always rising market hypothesis. Now, none of this actually is going to affect us because uh, we don't trade uh, stock indices as uh, stock traders or share, share stocks and shares. Uh, we trade futures. Um, and of course, it's the leverage in futures that makes the trading of futures and Forex, spot Forex or uh, currency futures, if you like. A lot of our Forex clients are now trading currency futures. Um, and um, it's the leverage that makes the trading so good. But leverage is a two-edged sword. It also cuts against you. Uh, so you need to know that. This is the classic chart. This is the uh, always rising left to right uh, chart that uh, um, is touted as the basis of stock market investment. Of course, uh, the issue here is that unless you're very, very broadly invested, uh, you may finish up in companies that uh, have a question mark over them. Uh, for various reasons. Tesla's one today. Um, and uh, that comes into this uh, first packet uh, saying uh, valuation of stocks is subjective and rubbery. You have to excuse me one moment, folks. I'll be right back with you. I'm sorry about this. Uh, but uh, the main point um, is um, uh, the premium uh, on hot stocks, the premium, the optimistic belief of traders. Uh, and uh, you, I think you might see something in Tesla pretty interesting soon. They are going to have to start hitting their uh, targets or there's going to be some uh, repercussions. Uh, and uh, I put at the bottom of this slide here, the last point is spec fever. Uh, based on anticipation of future value is a powerful incentive. Uh, and we see that all the time in the uh, tech stocks, some of which are worth it. Others like Snap have been terribly disappointing. Um, we uh, see it also in uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, and what you're really seeing here is the rise and fall of human emotion. Uh, and it's uh, an interesting basis. Um, and that's what the buy and hold theory is based on. Uh, and uh, the always rise hypothesis is largely true over big time frames, uh, but uh, markets do go into bear markets. It's not completely unknown. Uh, and uh, if you have to cash out at that time, it may not uh, be such a happy journey. Um, so the big trends in uh, Forex and uh, um, futures, we see this in the US dollar index, are a result of government policy. Okay, um, You've seen this chart before. I wait for it to change for you. Uh, there are two charts on this page. The top one is gold and the bottom one is the US dollar index. Now, these markets have been locked into an inverse correlation for a long time. In other words, 
uh, dollar strength is gold weakness and vice versa. This inverse correlation doesn't apply all the time, but when it does apply as it is now, it's very, very powerful. And I showed you, I've shown you this chart a couple of times, uh, and I put it up here just to make it clearer for you uh, what's happening. We've seen uh, the US dollar have a decent rally for the first time uh, since about, um, I guess, um, uh, let's have a look here. We'd be right back at uh, February. Uh, it's been absolutely flat for months and months. Uh, so it's having a first decent rally for quite a while. And you can see that that's why uh, gold has uh, run off. But these correlations are not one on one. You can see the rally in the dollar is not really affecting the downside of gold as much as one would have expect if these were equal relationships. So that's arguing for underlying strength in gold, which all you gold bugs I know uh, will be very happy to hear. We have a lot of gold bugs to Daniel Code, which is great. They're people of huge enthusiasm um, and um, uh, passion, uh, and they're passionate about their market. Um, I don't often agree with what they think, but uh, I wish them well for doing it. Uh, to us, gold is a very important market as a trading market. Um, we don't subscribe to the uh, idea that uh, gold will ever replace fiat currency, certainly not in my lifetime, maybe not in yours either. Um, but that's the uh, secret wish of all gold bugs, that uh, fiat currencies will be replaced by the gold standard. Um, and if that would happen, the value of gold, of course, would be astronomical, given how much uh, debt has been uh, created since uh, uh, the um, fixed pricing of gold uh, was ended. And I remember that. I can remember uh, when gold was fixed at $35. Um, and uh, it was amazing uh, uh, to see what happened uh, after that. And, and you can see all of that quite clearly on a chart. Okay, so this is what the uneducated, or what I call the Mark I eyeball, sees in a chart. This is the Russell 2000. Doesn't matter which chart, they're all much the same. And to the uneducated eye, um, this just looks like a whole lot of noise. Um, and uh, that's in fact uh, what uh, charts appear to be uh, until you start to refine them. Um, and that refinement is a result of a price and time. And what looks entirely random uh, is not random at all. Uh, but anyway, as we uh, begin our battle to uh, understand why these markets do what they do, uh, we can see that um, uh, I've added here uh, three of the oldest indicators that the uh, stock market guys love to use. Uh, this is a 50, a 100, and a 200-day moving average. Um, and uh, the theory being that uh, it tells you something about what markets are doing. Um, in my submission, it doesn't teach you much at all. Um, uh, all we could say from this chart is it hasn't had a close below the 200-day moving average, uh, but we can see it's had many closes below the 50 and 100-day. The 50 is the smaller red line at the top, the 100 is the blue line. It's had many closes below those levels and then rallied back up to close above those levels. So. Um, this is a terribly blunt tool. And in fact, at the bottom, uh, you can see we have a stochastic. This is a, not your standard stochastic. This is the Daniel Code stochastic, which is slightly different. Uh, most of the errors in stochastics are created by inside bars. Um, and this particular stochastic has a fairly unique way of dealing with inside bars. Um, so stochastics themselves are very blunt instruments, don't uh, don't fall in love with stochastics. They're, not, they're, they're an indicator, um, but uh, that's about all, as we'll see, so going forward. Um, then we might get to the stage of adding more studies. MACDs are very popular. Uh, uh, RSIs, I know people love to add these additional studies. Um, and uh, in my opinion, uh, they don't tell you anything. Um, and that's because, essentially, they're too broad. Uh, they're not precise enough for futures trading. Um, and uh, as we uh, move on, uh, I've taken you now. This is the January high in the uh, stock air indices. This one happens to be the Russell. They're all exactly the same. They'll show the same thing. Um, and you can see I've got some pinky looking triangles on this chart. Um, and that's to show you the periods during which markets uh, remained overbought. There's an old adage 
uh, that markets can remain overbought much longer than you can remain sol solvent, as <laughs> many bears have found out to their uh, horror. Uh, and uh, the same on the other side, markets can remain oversold uh, for much longer than you can remain uh, solvent. So the necessity, if you start looking at this sort of a chart with these sorts of indicators on it, um, you start looking at a stochastic and say, oh, it's overbought, it should be right for a turn. Well, it's not. It's terribly general. Um, these stochastics are not that specific. Uh, it looks to be on the next uh, run, which is over here. Uh, if you can see the arrow moving, uh, you can see that this high in the stochastic uh, was well followed by a run down. But of course, uh, the low in that move, which then rallied, is not reflected at all in the stochastic. So we need tools for trading that are much, much more precise. Uh, and uh, the best of them is if we add something um, that's uh, actually uh, precise, something specific, then we start to get towards finding a precise way of trading. Uh, and what we have on this chart, which you can see now, it's the same chart. Um, and I've just added one thing. I've added one of the Daniel Code blue lines, uh, which was at 16.12.5. Uh, and uh, if you uh, have a care to look at your uh, trading charts, uh, you'll see that on Tuesday, January the 23rd, 2018, uh, this market, the Russell, closed at 16.12.3. That's two ticks um, away from the Daniel Code blue line. We expect these Daniel Code numbers to be accurate to within 0.1%, uh, which is a very, very high degree of accuracy. Uh, this one in a number like 1612, uh, there's actually, because there are 10 ticks in each market, there's actually 16,000 ticks available in that market. Um, and the variation on that close uh, was two uh, out of about 16,000, uh, which is in the area of 0.0125%. Uh, but as a rule of thumb, that was one was very accurate. Uh, that happens more often than not. Uh, but uh, all markets react to these numbers. It's quite extraordinary. Those of you who've done a tutorial always say to me, gosh, I'm amazed. These markets are just like magnets. Markets uh, run to these numbers and turn at these numbers, and they only turn at these numbers. These are not FIB numbers. Uh, these are not old highs or old lows becoming new uh, support or resistance. None of that. These are just numbers that are created by the market itself based on a mathematical matrix, uh, which is why this is called Daniel's Code. Um, and all of these ratios, um, uh, quite uh, um, amazingly uh, to uh, me, as well as everyone else, I'm the person who discovered this or had it revealed to me that all of these numbers and these ratios come straight out of the book of Daniel in the Bible. Uh, and that offends a lot of people. Um, a lot of people, even uh, my own staff say, you know, uh, John, if you change the wording on your website so it made no no mention of the Bible, um, you'd get a lot more clients. Uh, but of course, I can't do that. Um, so yes, it's extraordinary. Um, and it happens all the time. We see this every day, how markets are ruled by these Daniel Code numbers. Now, our rule for target recognition is that uh, target recognition can happen on the bar high low or on the close. So in a rising market like this, we would expect to see either the high of a bar or the close of a bar hitting its Daniel Code number, of which there are a number, there are many, um, and hitting that number very, very precisely. Um, and that's the first rule of trading price. If you're interested in trading price, you really do need to be getting the um, Daniel Code uh, numbers, which you get from our uh, website. So we've now added something very precise that in all this period marked by the pink triangles where this market was overbought, in fact, there's only one position there where we've got target recognition as well as the market being overbought. Um, and for those of you who are interested in trading price, add those two things together. The first item, the most important of all of these rules is to find DC price recognition, target recognition have an overbought short-term stochastic, which is not on this chart, this is the long-term stochastic, and have divergence on a reliable momentum indicator. Uh, those of you who uh, get the Daniel Code trading package in your subscription, um, you have uh, all of that in there. 
so that was how we started to get that high, uh, which we had in all markets. Uh, and uh, remind me later, of course, Microsoft intrudes. Uh, I think Microsoft is an absolute virus. Uh, but nonetheless, it uh, wants to restart sometime uh, in the future. So I've told it to remind me later. Um, and I hope it uh, manages to keep itself to itself, at least until this tutorial, this uh, webinar, I should say, is over. Um, I've actually taken the uh, opportunity to show you the actual chart. This is the January 29th, 2018 members chart, which is in archives. All of these charts, which I create by hand uh, twice a week, uh, are listed in archives. Uh, and those of you who are interested, go to the Daniel Code website, click on the chart archives link, um, and you can go through and you can see the best part of 32, 33,000 charts uh, that I've created in the last 10 years. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, December this year will have been uh, running for 10 years, folks. So I guess that should be a reason for a party. All you uh, regulars who come along to these webinars, uh, Daniel Code members, friends, guests, who should be having a party. Uh, very late, I think possibly December 2018 uh, was when I actually uh, started this Daniel Code website. So believe it or not, we've been going happily along for 10 years now. Um, so let's, uh, this is the actual chart. I plucked it out of archives uh, just to show you that uh, these things are contemporaneous um, and they're not uh, created after the fact. Uh, so let us move on and find the next chart. Um, so um, having that certainty um, of target recognition as the first part of trading price is what creates more precise signals. Uh, stochastics, this is the short-term stochastic. Uh, you can see it's overbought at the time of the high, but it had been overbought many periods before that as well. Uh, none of them had this exact precise um, definition of uh, target recognition, stochastics overbought, divergence on the uh, momentum indicator. Um, and uh, you can see, once you put a number, a specific number on a chart, and demand of it that it either hit that number at the high or on the close or if the market's going down at the low, bar low or the close, you get rid of 99% of all your signals. You, you filter your signals down to a much, much smaller class of signals. Uh, these are the main uh, trend turning signals. These are the blue line trades uh, I'm talking about here. We see exactly the same thing on the red line and the black line trades, which are the retracements of operating swings. Once the market starts working outside the operating range, it starts getting its blue lines. Um, but uh, you can see this was uh, um, a pretty important turn, as I've talked to you about before. Um, and same thing in sugar. This is just another blue line signal in sugar, which was um, elected uh, late last week. Uh, after a horrendous rundown in sugar, it's really, uh, I must uh, find out why things at the supermarkets haven't got a lot cheaper, seeing as they nearly all seem to have sugar in them. Um, and the price of sugar is uh, been taking a real hiding. Uh, but there it was, it hit its blue line, it uh, complied with the other requirements we have for these signals, um, and it just stopped. Uh, and up it went, it's rallied, got a little inside bar today. Uh, which is not on this chart uh, because these were uh, prepared last night, some of them. Um, okay, so the important thing once you've got your signals as we progress uh, in our sort of thought process, the most important thing for you to start thinking about is trend uh, because trend determines how we handle the trade and also determines how we use our stops. Now, if you have a look at this uh, particular chart I'm showing you here, um, there's a down bar on January the 29th, which has got a red uh, bracket around it or a red uh, oblong around it. That bar actually changed the trend of this chart from up to down. Um, and it's extraordinary. It doesn't always happen this early. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Uh, but this is quite extraordinary that we got the change of trend signal uh, so early. Very, very few people saw that or understood it. Um, those who uh, uh, done the Daniel Coach tutorial, of course, did. Uh, but 
uh, once we see that we've got a change of trend and that we're with the trend, we're going to try and hold that trade as long as we can. Whereas on the other hand, if we think we're in a trade that's against the trend, that is a counter trend type signal, we're going to use a totally different approach to that trade. We're going to be far more aggressive on our stops um, and our exit. So we determining trend, the first question you should ask yourself every day when you see your end of day data is what is the trend? Because that determines how we trade. It determines which signals will be active and not active and it determines also how we manage our stops. Um, and this trade, by knowing that we had a change of trend there to down, uh, this trade finished up giving some part uh, of $8,000 plus or minus. I've just, uh, I got out about uh, 12 or 14 points from the low. Uh, when you start getting these screamingly huge bars, uh, you really need to go to a uh, trailing stop, but don't make it tight or you'll get stopped out. Uh, put on a trading stop about equivalent to one average day's range. Um, and uh, so what I mean by that is that as volatility increases, we don't want to increase our risk parameter. In other words, uh, if we are um, go, if we were to go to a casino um, and we had a staking system that we had a faith in, we would use constant staking. We would use one unit or 10 units or 50 units, no matter what. Once you start getting involved in progressive staking systems um, where you change your, the size of your stake, you're actually bringing in another unknown variable. Uh, so I uh, encourage you not to do that. Uh, when you start your trading, if you're good at it eventually and maybe not too far away, your account size will double. Once that's happened, you can double the number of contracts you're trading. But make sure you understand what uh, the margin percentages are. Uh, a lot of futures contracts have very small margins, uh, and some of them have quite large margins. So make sure you're really um, across that entirely. Um, but it was simply the knowledge of knowing that that bar gave us a change of trend that enabled us uh, to hold this trade uh, well down towards its low. It's pretty exciting stuff. Should be more of it. That's the volatility which I'm always speaking about um, and it's a wonderful thing when it happens. Um, in a trending market, I've just been saying to you that we handle uh, our trades with the trend and against the trend quite differently. Um, the signals are different, the options are different and the stop loss management is very different. Uh, this is the US dollar index having its uh, fall from November 17 uh, all the way down to uh, late February, early March uh, 2018. And what I've circled in here are the counter trends. Um, and you can see that all of them fail. Eventually, one of them won't fail and you'll get a change of trend. Uh, but uh, while you've got a trending market, counter trends fail. That's why they're called counter trends. And that's why we need to be so aware of whether we're trading with the trend or against the trend. Now, remembering trading is all about probabilities. We do not have foresight. We do not know what this market is going to do in the future. What we do know is that today's bar will contain in it all the information we need to create the orders for what we do tomorrow. Um, and that's the essence of trading. And that information of uh, what is in the today's bar, the first thing it'll tell us is trend. Uh, are we still in the same trend or are we in a different trend? Um, it will tell us about frequency. It will tell us about time, uh, the time the market's running at. All markets have an internal clock um, and they um, try to keep to that uh, clock. It's quite, uh, it, it's not an, in terms of our times. We don't, we don't really understand why this happens, but Markets do have an internal clock, and when they think they've got ahead of that clock, they want to lose some time, so that's typically when they put in inside bars. That's not the only reason for inside bars, but that's what causes the vast majority of inside bars, and it's like uh, running on the spot. Those of you who are in the military or uh, did uh, PE or PT at school uh, probably know what I mean by running on the spot. Um, there's plenty of action there, but there's no motion. You're not going forward. There's no uh, 
uh, forward uh, motion. You're just uh, marking time, is the old expression. Uh, and that's what happens um, uh, with inside bars. Outside bars uh, are the opposite. The market thinks for some reason it's got behind time. Uh, so it puts in an outside bar, which is really a combination uh, of two or three uh, daily, daily bars compressed into one bar. So in a trending market, counter trends fail by definition. That's why when we put our order on, if we think it's a counter trend, we may be quite wrong, but if we think it's a counter trend, we use much more aggressive stop loss and exit procedures. You may put on that order and then the next day well, after that trading is complete, you say, oh, that's changed the trend. Well, that's fine. That's telling you to hang on to that trade as long as you can uh, within the parameters of your trading plan. Um, and that's the essence of building a trading plan. Uh, as we move on and your chart changes, you'll see this is gold. This is the 12-day uh, chart of gold. Um, and this is a uh, red line. You can see there is actually a fifth seal line. Um, and it's what forecast the all-time high in gold. I was actually uh, running a tutorial in Taupo that day uh, or that weekend when it all came to happen. And uh, it was very exciting to have uh, blue line uh, cells, uh, TO3 and blue line cells, and to have our fifth seal line um, whacking right at uh, the all-time high in gold. Uh, this is not um, uh, the only chart, continuous chart. You can also use an 067 chart. But interestingly, the way the uh, 067 charts, they're the back-adjusted continual charts, Trade Navigator, uh, the way they're created by adding or subtracting premiums and discounts on rollover actually distorts price. Uh, if you look at this on the 067 chart, you'll see that it tells you gold had uh, an all-time high of 12.99, uh, which is not right. That's just what uh, happened in the adjustment process in the 067 chart. So uh, the 057 charts, they're just uh, created by putting, adding on the data for, uh, from each rollover. Uh, there's no back adjustment in it, so the prices in the 057 charts um, are real. But I put a cross on this to show you that at any point along this angle or line, this is what got me started me thinking about angles. Um, at any point on that line, uh, you can read off a price level, which is the x-axis, that's the one going up and down the side, and you can read off a time date on the y-axis, which is the one running along the bottom. Um, and in fact, uh, it's very hard to accept this. It's a, it takes a while to get your head around it. But time and price, or what's being recorded on the x-axis and the y-axis, are actually the same thing, but recorded on a different axis. Now, I know that's a pretty incomprehensible thought to start with, but um, it is true. Um, and uh, the more you think about time uh, as being, first of all, an adjunct to price, uh, that's why we say when time and price are squared, a turn becomes almost inevitable. Um, uh, we need to think about both these issues. Now, having made that statement about time and price squared, uh, somebody will jump up and say, oh, that's a GAN statement. Well, yes, it is. And I'm the world expert on GAN uh, because I spent 12 years uh, doing nothing but GAN. Um, I got sucked in by some pretty smart salesmen. Uh, some of you will uh, know who he was in Australia, uh, the GAN man. And um, I got totally fascinated with GAN. I spent 12 years uh, studying GAN. I had people uh, in the uh, UK and uh, uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco trying to buy uh, original GAN letters for me, original GAN charts. And uh, uh, I went to all of the GAN tutorials and, of course, um, it, it's a fallacy. Uh, it's not, it doesn't work. Not true. Um, and Kevin, what I mean by time and price squared, what Gan meant, Gan used to draw angles on his charts. He'd have a, 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 a three by one angle, an a eight by one angle, um, and a one by one angle. And what he was doing uh, in his charts, these are stock charts back in his day, um, uh, they were on sort of graph paper and it had to be an equal uh, each square was equal, so uh, one day forward was one bar and one uh, price unit up uh, was one box as well. So he'd 
uh, draw these angles and he came up with the expression time and price squared meaning that that the price had actually got to one of those angles uh, because an angle contains elements of time and of price. I liked the expression so much I started using it. I figured since I got absolutely nothing out of my 12 years of study of GAN except having to learn uh, the lesson at the end uh, of it uh, that I might as well uh, have something uh, and I've just used that expression. But with us, it means something entirely different. Kevin, what it means uh, on our members' charts, we have uh, price levels um, and we can also we don't put them on the members chart but you can yourself uh, create the time cycles the Daniel code time cycles and as I'm going to show you a bit later on in this webinar when we have time at a known Daniel code time cycle and also price at a known Daniel code time cycle they don't have to be the same same cycle they don't both have to be the 59 or the 37 and a half any known Daniel code time cycle and any known Daniel Code price cycle, then we say time and price are squared and a turn is almost inevitable. Um, and funnily enough, on the fourth and fifth seal, uh, which I'm happy to teach people at tutorials if they're interested in them, um, uh, the, uh, every point on a valid fourth and fifth seal line is time and price squared, but not because it's on that, uh, on that line. That's a coincidence, the line follows um, the calculations of time and price. Okay, so I hope that makes that a little clearer. Um, so um, this next chart uh, actually starts to show you some of the time signals. Um, this is not by any means uh, comprehensive, uh, but I wanted to show you that uh, at the January high, uh, you can see we had a 70 cycle. Um, the uh, main cycles we use for the uh, Daniel Code time cycle, the major cycles, the big cycles, um, are 44, 59, 62, and 70. 44 is the cycle for gold. Uh, if you want to know about this stuff, uh, go to the Daniel Code website, click on articles, um, and look for two articles uh, called um, Masterclass. Masterclass 1. It's about time and masterclass two, timing gold. Um, and they'll give you a very, very good understanding uh, of the basis of longer term time cycles. So they're uh, at the Daniel Code website. They're quite long articles. Uh, I suggest you print them out. You'll need to uh, read them a few times uh, before they uh, start to gel with you. Uh, but you can see at the high, uh, the January high, we had a 70 cycle on the day of the actual high. Um, and uh, 70 is uh, what we call the heathen cycle. Uh, there's actually nothing heathen about it. In fact, it's the cycle that um, Sir Isaac Newton used um, in his uh, wonderful bit of writing, uh, Observations on the Prophecies of St. John, uh, when he's talking about some of the prophecies of Revelations. Uh, but he goes on, Sir Isaac Newton goes on to say, uh, the book of Daniel is the most important book in the Bible uh, for it, uh, it, tell, it foretells the coming of the Messiah. Um, and he does something entirely different to what I've done. Uh, but uh, it's very, very interesting in uh, how he uses time um, and, and adjusts it on the basis of time in, in uh, scriptural prophecy or prophetic writing is fungible, uh, meaning uh, it can move, but it must retain the same characteristic. Money, for example, is fungible. You can put a $100 note into your bank account, and you go back in three weeks and say, I want $100. You'll get a $100 note back, but it's not the same $100. In the same way, uh, you can say, I've got a $100 note in my hand, I've got 100 bucks. Or you can say, I've got 520s or 1010s. Uh, you've still got the value of $100, the purchasing power of $100 in your hand. So that part hasn't changed, but the internal makeup of it uh, may have changed, which is why uh, for a number like 70 in the Bible, it can be 70 days, weeks, months, years, uh, decades, etc. Very interesting. So you see, we had a 70 time cycle right at the January high here. Um, and these uh, time cycles are very, very accurate. Uh, they are valid for plus or minus one period only. Um, and that's because they are valid to start from either um, a, a chart high low, that's uh, more than one standard deviation from the mean, or from the closing high or low, which can be the bar before uh, the chart high or low. 
uh, but no more than one bar back. You can't uh, you can't start fudging this stuff. Um, so that's a valid cycle. Then we had cycles at the low and the subsequent highs, uh, and the latest one I've just left on this chart to show you uh, on towards the right hand side, including today's bar, today's low. Um, has come right on a 70 cycle. So we have uh, time today. Uh, we have, I think, close enough to price. We have a Daniel Code red line um, at 25.95. Uh, let me bring up uh, the chart to see what the low was. Uh, and the low today was at 25.91 and a quarter. That's a bit far away. Uh, that's outside our... Um, uh, that's outside our allowable variance, but we do have a time cycle day, so uh, don't be too surprised if this thing rallies on Friday. That's also a seasonal bias. This market tends to rally on Fridays. Okay, let's move on. Um, now, all markets are fractal by nature. Scott, this is what will interest you. Um, and the little picture you see at the bottom here on the right, that's a time, that's a sundial, that's a primitive sundial. In fact, it's not primitive, that's quite a sophisticated sundial. Uh, a primitive sundial is just uh, uh, draw a circle in the dirt and stick a upright in it, and that will give you uh, effectively the start of a sundial. Um, but as I said, all markets have an internal timing mechanism, um, and we've been uh, using this uh, fractalian trading program for a very, very long time as a research tool. Uh, we can now uh, put this into effect uh, to be used by uh, clients, but uh, it, it, it's very time extensive to run. Most people don't uh, take the uh, Fractalian because of the time involved um, in creating the signals. Um, and we've been trying for some years to get this to work on an auto trade type program. Um, and it hasn't been terribly successful so far. Uh, so we've switched over to um, other programs, which I uh, hope to show you as we get further along here today. Uh, but this is just a standard run. This is oil. Uh, it uses the 067 chart because this is machine trading. Um, for machine trading, you have to use the 067 chart, uh, which is the back adjusted uh, long term chart because it gets rid of the uh, big gaps up or down on uh, rollover. Um, if you don't use the 067 chart, if you use the 057 chart as your longer term chart, uh, the program will pick up these massive moves that you sometimes get on rollover um, and uh, you'll be suckered into thinking, wow, that's great, I'd like another 20 of those. Um, and you'll spend a lot of time searching for them without realizing uh, what you were seeing was just the consequence of rollover. So uh, for all machine trading, uh, you have to use the 067 chart. This is oil, uh, and it's run from uh, July the 4th, 2016 to the end of the year. Um, and this is simply machine trading. This has uh, got a, a, a piece of code in it uh, that gives it the Daniel code uh, time signals. Um, and uh, you can call that an algorithm. Everyone else, apart from me, would call it an algorithm and tell you how great it was. An algorithm is just a mathematical expression for a known uh, set of variables set in a particular order, an ordered set of variables. Uh, and once you create an algorithm, it's just a small piece of code uh, or a small piece of uh, data. Um, and uh, once you've identified that, uh, that tool will continue to search for the same piece of data all the time. Uh, algorithms or algos, algos as they're called now, um, are used in much a looser sense. You have, oh, you know, this excited the algos and they started buying the market. Uh, there are algorithms that actually uh, work on speech as well. So there are all sorts of uh, guys getting bunny hopped about uh, exciting words that the uh, Fed might use when they're making an announcement or uh, any company might make in its announcements. Um, that's very, very short term trading. It's of no interest to me. I've done it. Uh, I've traded uh, everything you can possibly think of, including down to three tick bars. Uh, but uh, the most money is made from trading daily bars. Um, and that's a statement. Uh, any of you who've done a tutorial, uh, you've been able to prove that for yourselves. I like always the idea. Uh, of you prove it for yourself. That's a, the, the ultimate form of knowledge. Uh, saying that you read it somewhere or you heard it somewhere or Needham told you, that's one form of knowledge, but it's not the best. 
the best form of knowledge is I proved this for myself. Uh, that way your brain and your subliminal mind accepts this thing as being solid um, and that's uh, about the stage you get to be a really, really good trader. But anyway, uh, Scott, this is Fractalian um, and um, we can't uh, we can't auto trade this. Uh, you can trade it. Uh, anyone who does a tutorial, I'm happy to teach them to do this. Most people don't. Uh, most people don't even ask for it. They're much more focused on uh, what we call the CTP, uh, which is the continuous trade protocol, which I'll show you later. But uh, this is just a straight machine trade. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, it's got a small set of rules in it uh, that come off the Daniel Code time signals. Um, and for this period from uh, July to the end of the year in 2016, um, it's not a particular period I picked. It just happened to be what was set up. Uh, on the machine uh, that I was using on that particular computer last night. Um, and it made uh, $7,400 uh, net profit uh, on 87 trades. Now, remember, this is not real. This is simulated trading. It doesn't take into account slippage. Uh, it does take into account commission. I set the machine so that they it, it, it's charged off commission. Uh, but this particular program doesn't use stops. So don't worry about the closed out drawdown or the intraday drawdowns, that doesn't happen because the program itself doesn't use stop. But when we are trading the program, of course, we use much more conservative stops. But this is the basis. Uh, the simplest way to test anything is test it without stops. Uh, once you start putting in stops, it's a form of optimization and you get uh, less than real results, particularly when you're using big amounts of data and this is stuff I'm just showing you a few months but this is stuff I've, I've you know back tested and run over 22 years um, in some of these markets um, and that's why we don't use stops in the actual trading program though when we uh, uh, start trading this ourselves of course we use stops so uh, disregard the drawdowns and um, uh, that doesn't actually happen in real life but anyway you've got nice bit of trading this is uh, July uh, to uh, the end of December, so it's six months trading close enough. Uh, you've made 7,400. You've got a 67.8, 68% win rate, um, and you've had uh, 87 trades. Now, one thing why you've got this sundial in this picture is to show you that you can manipulate time. Uh, you can change the settings for the variables, the inputs for the market. Time is one of those inputs. It's arguably the most important one. And you can change the speed at which the time cycles run. And once we do that, have a look at this. This is the same market, same period. It's a four day difference for some reason. I don't understand. It's running from July the 8th instead of July the 4th to the end of the year. But it's the same market, same data. But we've almost doubled our profit. Uh, we have uh, fewer trades. We've gone from uh, 78, I think we had, down to 54. Um, and uh, for this six-month period, uh, we've got uh, $14,500 uh, net of commission. Bearing in mind, this is machine traded. Looking at back data, it doesn't account for slippage. You can take uh, 8 10 percent off these sorts of numbers to account for slippage. The margin uh, on, uh, the, the margin on uh, oil it's $2,500. Uh, so this is actually 757% on margin for six months, which is uh, sort of 1,500% per annum, uh, which is quite extraordinary. You won't get that, of course, because of slippage. Um, and uh, you'll also require more than margin in your account. Most brokers will uh, ask you at least to have uh, twice margin. Uh, that's a fairly conservative uh, view. I don't do it. Um, uh, because I have faith in the program and I know uh, where the stops are. But um, I also don't trade 100% of margin uh, in the account. So um, I, I'm, I've never invested that highly. Uh, but this is just to show you the potential of this thing. It's a lot of work to do it manually. Uh, you run the program, but you have to run it every day. And there's a number of alternate sequences. Um, and we haven't quite got there yet, uh, Scott, in particular. I know you've been particularly interested in Fractalian. Um, as you can see from these results, it is an extraordinary program. Uh, and we'll continue to work to uh, see if we can make it into some sort uh, of an auto trade program. Uh, talking about that, 
Auto trade programs can be very dangerous. A few years ago, uh, there was a particularly uh, uh, famous or infamous um, uh, auto trade program that ran totally automatically. Uh, it was a uh, one of the big uh, uh, trading houses. I won't name them; they'll be upset with me. Um, uh, but uh, some people I knew were using it, and um, uh, with a full auto trade program, it just goes on trading as long as there's money in the account. And these people, uh, this particular uh, couple, had a big account, uh, close to a million dollars, a lot of money for private uh, people. And um, they went off on holidays to Europe, um, and the auto trading program just kept trading. Um, and uh, it went from doing quite well to doing very badly. Um, and it finished up uh, wiping out um, close to $800,000 of their account. Uh, and this was a program uh, marketed and developed by one of the uh, three or four biggest names in the business. So I don't believe in full auto trade programs and I'm never going to release one that works like that. Um, at best, uh, my idea of an auto trade program um, is a program that will create the orders, uh, will have inherently in it where those orders go um, and is able to place the orders automatically, but it will require a human prompt to do so. In other words, it's like a, a dead switch on a train. If you if you don't, uh, the, the driver doesn't keep hitting the active button every 60 seconds, um, the train just uh, switches off. Um, some some trains, it's a matter of minutes, not 60 seconds, but you get my point. Um, it's called a dead man switch. Um, and I think all trading programs need a dead man switch. If you're away for some reason, uh, this thing shouldn't run without, uh, no program should ever run without uh, you supervising it. Um, so in this uh, discussion about price and moving from just price to price and time, uh, you can see here that uh, price gives us the major turns. You can see uh, at the January high, we've uh, we've talked about that. Um, this was another one of the blue lines. Uh, this is in fact the Dow. It had a blue line, a handful of ticks away from the high. Um, stochastic was overboard, all that sort of stuff. And down it went. Uh, and it ran down exactly to one of the blue lines, punched through it a bit. Um, and since then, it's been running off these same numbers. Um, I'll just get the highlighter to uh, show you um, where it is. Here we are. And it's called uh, the spotlight. OK, uh, so uh, here was your high. This hit a Daniel Code number reversed. Down it went. Now, they're hitting these numbers all the time, merely hitting and finding target recognition doesn't mean that a turn is happening. You need other rules to be incorporated in there. But I just want to make you aware of how this stuff works. So uh, from this low look straight up to this blue line here, uh, 25, 737, only a handful of ticks away. Down it goes. Look how accurately it hits the red line. Uh, rallies back up. There's actually another red line in there that's not on this chart. Look at this coming down. These bars here, I'll see if I can bring the chart up. Uh, on another computer so I can actually give you the dates instead of saying these bars here, uh, which is not a uh, not, not a super sophisticated expression. <laughs> um, and uh, here we're looking at, um, I think we're looking at, here we are, just stand by for a moment. Uh, here we are looking at, uh, across a rally, uh, that's uh, March the 19th, uh, I think that bar. Um, Unless I've got myself totally confused. Uh, there should be a couple of bars down afterwards. One up, one down. That's the down. Mm. Not quite sure where it is. Looks to be early April anyway. Uh, point is, you can see they just hit that 24,791 number. One of them's in fact closed exactly on that 24,791 number. That's your target recognition. It only causes a short counter trend two days. Down it goes. Now this next bar, 24451, hits that, stops on it. Two courses, a two-day counter trend. Eventually it gets down to the black line, uh, which is the last level of support and resistance in any swing. Uh, the black line's a bit different to the other lines, folks. Those of you who have got the uh, access to the Daniel Code studies, Vicky's joined us. Vicky Butterworth. Vicky, welcome. Uh, I'm always very pleased to see uh, ladies. Uh, we don't have enough of them with us. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, let's see. What do 
Oh, Akshay's with it. Nice to have you, Akshay. I hope you're going well. Um, Albert, Albert's going to start doing a tutorial next week. Adrian Stern, he's a voice from the past. Great to have you with us, Adrian. Great to all of you folks. Well, I haven't said um, hello to you in person. Uh, please uh, 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 apologise. I'm lovely to see all our uh, old friends here. So good. And Mick Dougal, Mick, I've got a message for you. I've been ringing you. I've left three messages. Um, and haven't had a call back. I don't know if you're on holidays or uh, what's happening, uh, but if you'd shoot me an email and let me know when it'll be convenient uh, for me to call you, we need to uh, uh, finish off and uh, get some more lessons into you. Uh, but good to have everyone here. So uh, without uh, beating this thing to death, uh, let's just have a look. Uh, we're down to this low, target recognition, up it goes. Look how this is target recognition. Look how it stopped here. Uh, this one I'm sure of, this is April the 5th, uh, the high of that bar um, is 24596, um, five ticks um, away from the Daniel Code, uh, 24600, uh, four ticks away, four ticks away from the, out of 24,000 um, away, just so perfect, uh, same thing happens here. Uh, up it goes, uh, and then uh, you get your high there, and down it goes, and look where this low stops at right at the 23791 number, which causes the rally, which goes to the 24451 number, which then turns around um, and drops off today. Um, so price is going to give us the majority, the vast majority uh, of uh, major turns, but it doesn't really describe properly what happens with markets in between those turns. And everything I do is motivated by trying to understand what makes markets turn. Uh, that's how Daniel's code came into being. I was searching for a convincing reason that I could say I can put this on a chart and I have a real reason to understand now what it is that makes market turns. And it's a group of factors. It's not just price, but price <clears throat> to almost all of you is the primary tool that you're using. Uh, people who've done tutorials, of course, uh, DC tutorials are not using uh, price. They could use it as well as, but they don't. Uh, once they find out the mysteries of time, um, as Sue would tell you, uh, they just uh, go ahead with trading time. Um, here's Tom. Tom, is the Dow still in a downtrend? Uh, yes, uh, it is, but it's made a higher low, and I guess it rallies tonight. Tom, that's usually what happens on Friday, but uh, looking at a daily chart, yes, the trend is down. Uh, now, that can change. So if we have a buy signal uh, for uh, Friday, which we do, uh, at the time we place that order, it appears to be against the trend. So we want to use uh, tighter, more proactive stops. Uh, it may be wrong. It might be a bar that changes the trend. But at the time we place the order, that's uh, the consideration uh, that we make. OK, so this next chart, once it changes for you folks, uh, which it has now, these are time signals, and you can see these are not exhaustive. <clears throat> uh, I'm not giving a class in, in trading time. There are other signals that are not on this chart. Uh, but I've just taken the same chart, and I've put on the major time signals to show you that time signals not only give us all the major turns, but they fill in the blanks between turns. <clears throat> they give us the counter trends and the continuation of trend. And you have a new time signal <clears throat> almost every day. Uh, it may be a continuation signal, just the same as it was yesterday. But trading time creates this incredible block of signals. You hardly ever, I mean, I don't exaggerate by saying never ever, but you hardly ever can sit on a time chart if you know how to trade it and say, I'm not sure what I should be doing today. Now, that's an entirely different thing to saying, I'm not sure what the markets will do tomorrow because we never know what the markets do tomorrow. But if we've learned to trade properly and incorporated trading time into our trading plan, we don't have to know what the market will do tomorrow. We only have to know what are the correct orders we should create tonight for tomorrow's trading. Um, and once you do that, you're approaching a pretty, pretty hot spot of a trading. Um, this uh, uh, is a CTP. Um, Scott, this is um, the continuous trade protocol. Uh, and this is sort of uh, superseded Fractalian. 
<clears throat> it has elements of Fractalian in it, but um, it's a composite program that I've been using for many years. And uh, we've been trying to get this program for over two years. Um, and uh, programming is just a nightmare, it seems to be. Uh, excuse a little bit of a buzz in the background if you hear it, folks. That's my uh, gardener uh, has arrived cutting the lawn. So it looks very nice, but he's doing a good job. Um, CTP, or the Continuous Trade Protocol, is a system I've been using for many years. And we've got that programmed. The interesting thing is, despite it taking two years and massive amounts of code writing, it doesn't compete with what you can do manually, which is extraordinary. But this, um, I wanted to actually show you the uh, order entries for today. They didn't come through in time. Uh, this is just a random uh, piece of data I picked up from uh, um, April the 25th. Um, for some reason, it was the one that was um, sitting there in plain sight. Uh, but it gives you a, a, just a brief idea. These orders go on oh, for another 15 uh, columns. Uh, but it gives you a brief idea of what gets kind of created by this program. And these orders can all be placed simultaneously um, by uh, an API. Uh, they all go on at once. In fact, I think yesterday uh, we put on 150-something orders. Um, so um, the capacity of automation is quite extraordinary. But the program, the trading program, the auto programs can't compete with the Mark II eyeball. I hope to have taken you from the Mark I uneducated eyeball to this stage of the Mark II reasonably educated um, eyeball. Uh, you can see here the interesting things in the past 25 years. I've been trading full time now for 28 years, futures and forex, and 30 years of stocks and shares before that. Um, and these are some thoughts I had. High frequency trading people often talk to me. It's come and stayed. It made no difference to our trading at all. High frequency trading is essentially a game of cheating uh, or using technological advantage. Some of these firms uh, pay very, very big money to have their servers co-located in the exchanges or very, very close to the exchanges. So they're getting the data um, nanoseconds ahead of anyone else. Uh, and in our case, they're probably by the time it goes through 283 internet links to get to uh, Australia, uh, they're probably getting their data four or five seconds before I get it. It's made absolutely no difference to our trading at all. Trading hasn't changed in 30 years. We get the same results, better results, because we've learned about time, but essentially high frequency trading's meant nothing to us. Algorithms the same. I know they're the big buzzword. Uh, they're just a chart. There's an error there. It shouldn't be PF. It should be of machine trading. Algorithms are just a part, uh, a mathematical expression uh, that uh, defines a pattern, uh, whether that's uh, a numerical pattern uh, or uh, a data, words, literary pattern. It finds that pattern. It goes on finding it. And in the algorithm it's taught, when it finds that pattern, it needs to react, which it does. So we've seen Fed, Fed liquidity, intervention, more liquidity. Think of the times you read about the Fed liquidity. Think of the times you, you, you read about QE. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. It hasn't made any difference at all to our trading. Now, I'm sure it's made massive differences uh, to uh, the long-term traders, uh, having a bid in the market. But for our sort of trading, no difference at all. Uh, and none of this has made any difference. Uh, and uh, that's the interesting thing at the end of all this discussion, folks, which I hope you've enjoyed. Um, you're thinking about time and price and the angularity of markets and the potential of machine trading. It creates a much more educated Mark II eyeball. But nothing in machine trading matches our manual trading because there are things in trading that can't be programmed. Um, and for those folks of you who've done a tutorial, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's one of the great thrills um, of having something that can't be replicated. The quickest way to lose your IP is to try and put it into a trading program because the minute you do that, it can walk. It just walks out in the data stick. It goes everywhere. Uh, everyone swears it doesn't happen. It happens all the time, I promise you. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a great joy to know once you've learned uh, through a Daniel Code tutorial how to trade time and price no machine will be able to replicate what you can actually do with your educated eyeball. 
Um, okay, so um, if you're interested in this stuff, you want to be a really good trader, um, uh, send me an email, please, jneedham at the danielcode.com, jneedham at the danielcode.com. I'm saying that twice. I got that from uh, Bill Riley. Albert, to find Mark 1, Mark 2. Mark 1 is where you're going to be starting. It's a not very educated eyeball. By the time you get to Mark 2, you will know everything there is to know about markets. And we start next week, my friend, for you. Uh, so that'll be truly exciting, making that journey. Um, let me know if you're interested in the tutorial. Send me your phone number, the country location, so I don't call you in the middle of the morning or something like that. Thanks, Mike. I hope you enjoyed it, mate. Um, and I'll give you a call, and uh, we can talk about doing a Daniel Code uh, tutorial uh, sometime shortly. Um, if you haven't already um, had a free trial of the Daniel Code, you're most welcome. Just go to the website. Hit register. Terry will uh, set you up with a 31-day free trial. Um, and if you don't have uh, Genesis Trade Navigator charting program, which is what I use, I'm a partner of theirs, uh, also uh, Terry can arrange a free trial for you of that also. Uh, finally, folks, thanks for being with us today. Um, this is our compliance um, statement, which you really need to always be aware of. Uh, trading is a very, very dangerous and you can lose your money very quickly if you don't know how to trade. Um, and the loss of risk of loss in trading is commodities or futures can be substantial. I see this every day. People come to me to do a tutorial and uh, some of them have lost a lot of money. Some of them made a lot of money, then lost a lot of money. Um, but uh, once you know how to trade the Daniel Code way, uh, your risks, while they're still there, become very, very substantially less. Uh, so that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, and I hope to see you at our next uh, tutorial in two weeks' time, our next webinar, I should say. Um, anything you're particularly interested in, uh, shoot me an email. Um, Akshay would like to know if there's any update on T-bonds. Uh, let me see, and I can uh, tell you, my friend. Uh, so uh, we had, uh, what have we got for this? Uh, uh, T-bonds has had a about a five or six day rally. It ran off a blue line signal, it's up. Uh, and uh, we've actually got a, a sell signal for tonight, actually. Um, and uh, be interesting to see if that's selected. Remember, these trade signals that we create are only conditional signals. They don't mean anything until they are elected, by which I mean <clears throat> we show you a number which they've got to go to to become elected. Uh, until that happens, they're only conditional signals. Uh, New Yen, is it Mr. New Yen or just New Yen? Lovely to have you with us, my friend. Thank you. Uh, and Sue, of course, you as well. All right, folks, that's it for today. Uh, shoot me. Thanks, John, down at Coffs Harbour. Having a great day. Um, it's lovely up here too, mate. Uh, anything you're particularly interested in, if you shoot me an email, uh, I can make sure I address it in the next uh, uh, webinar in a fortnight's time. Uh, for me, it's uh, Friday. Uh, it's half past 11 on Friday morning. Um, so um, I've already put my orders on for tonight's trading or your tomorrow's trading. Uh, so this is pretty much the start of the weekend for me. Uh, I hope you enjoy your weekend, folks. I look forward to talking with you all soon. Bye for now.